most common manifestation of this spirit of fellowship among sledders is the snowmobile club. Whether it's a hot fire to warm up by, a no-holds-barred steak barbecue in the middle of a snowstorm, or the miles and miles of well-groomed and maintained trails that we all enjoy, you can bet the enthusiastic members of one of the thousands of snowmobile clubs are behind the scenes making it all happen. As you can imagine, the staff of Snowmobile TV has had the opportunity to meet our share of club people while making this show. And we have to say that one club that stands out is the Northern Timber Cruisers of Millinocket, Maine. Located in spectacular northern Maine, the evergreen forests and snow-covered mountains featured on the club insignia are just part of the reason why sledders come here from all over. Leo Bouchard, the club president, told us that the root of their success and a source of great pride to all club members is their well-maintained part of the state's interconnecting trail system. We started with small groom equipment, and then as people found out about our little secret here, uh, the, the scenery and the, and the trails, uh, we had to make the trails bigger, and the town of Mill Market purchased larger groom equipment. We're taking care of this ITF-86, about 106 miles, then we have what we call club trails. And we probably have about 40, 50 miles of club trails that we take care of with uh, just regular long track snow sleds and smaller drags. We receive money from the state club grant, which helps pay for the fuel, but the people dragging that, they volunteer their time to do it. Like most club organizations, the work seems endless, and the many roles that need to be played in order to keep the club running are almost always undertaken by volunteers. And whether it's shoveling snow off the roof, or keeping the fire going under a kettle of hot stew, there are some folks you can always count on. Uh, the people that work in the kitchen all volunteer help. They're here eight, nine hours a day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It, and it takes people like that, because uh, you just can't afford to pay for what work that has to be done. And if you didn't have the volunteer help, you just couldn't do it. Another thing Leo is proud to point out is that the Northern Timber Cruisers has for years welcomed enthusiasts of other winter activities to use their trails and facilities. This puts them way out in front of the growing national trend toward the multiple use of trails by many different groups. We have not just snowbound, we have a cross-country ski trails here too. We have 61 miles of ski trails that there's no charge for people to use. And we all work together as one group. It's a winter clubhouse for everybody. One of the advantages of the skiers belonging to the uh, Snowmobile Club is that we can work together to generate income to provide us with the equipment to work on the ski trails. We use two different uh, Polaris wide track, uh, long track machines, 500s are really big and powerful, and we use them for breaking the trail, and we also use them for setting the track and grooming it. We use a Kid Tech Trail Tenderizer. It's a really nice piece of equipment. It performs about three different operations in one fell swoop. It saves us time out there. We can make one pass when we go through. We basically set it up with as many machines as we can so we have like a squadron going out, a wing formation with a groom on the last. I don't think most people realize the amount of effort that does go into it. Uh, there's, it's like any other organization, there's a core of individuals that volunteer a lot of time. Some people just don't live out there, they love to be out in the woods, and they work hard at it. And uh, the people do appreciate it, though. But I don't think they realize the amount of effort that goes into maintaining these trails. And there is yet another reason that sets the Northern Timber Cruisers out from the pack. They have their very own snowmobile museum, located about 10 snowmobile lengths from the clubhouse. As far as I know, this is the only uh, museum within the United States. It's one of four, and it is the only one located and owned at a clubhouse and by a club. Well, the museum dates back to uh, an interest back in the 60s in Polaris to uh, test machinery, their machinery, in uh, the Allagash region of northern Maine. This club is a very active club through a lot of uh, uh, fundraisers and so forth, and we did a lot of fundraisers and things with antiques that we actually found that were used in those early 60s trips. And as we dug into them and we sorted them and uh, got to know them better, we realized what a history Nolan Arcot and Maine played in the development of modern recreational snowmobile. Around here we have varying snow conditions in it. We get slush, we get sticky snow, we get cold, we get hills, we get mountains, we have trees. So my father convinced them to test here, and they tested snowmobiles between 61 and 66 here 
with endless trips into the Allagash region. Many of these machines are prototypes, rare, very rare, one-of-a-kind snowmobiles that were brought here to test. The recreational snowmobile only started in 1954, so the history is fairly recent, and antiques are considered 66 back, and we have them from 66 to 57, as well as a 1952 model here. With over 100 miles of groomed snowmobile trails, another 60-plus miles for cross-country skiers, and more than enough spectacular scenery to go around. What do you suppose a random sample of sledders had to say during our visit? Oh, I think it's a very nice clubhouse. I like the food. Good stew, good soup, good price. The hospitality is just terrific up here. The folks are always friendly and the food's good, the price is right. Nice people. Perhaps Leo himself sums it up best when he says, It's a winter clubhouse for everybody. And everybody enjoys it and everybody fits it in. We all work together.